Yes. That's another badly injured patient we have here. Uh, I should inspect the bones. Specifically uh, his joints. It seems as though something's amiss. Uh, okay, so what's his name? His name is Mr. Mister. Okay. Alright, well, I doubt you can hear me. Shirts are actually very useful. They hold the bones together uh, securely while giving mobility. But, I can't lie, but I doubt you're going to have any mobility after this. Mm -hmm. Looking look here, you fracture some joints. Which isn't good, but at least your joint is still doing its purpose, which is to connect with other joints, so to do its function. But to be honest, even though some joints are looking more badly crushed than others, uh, that is not why they are different. Um, there are three types of ways that the joints are categorized, and there are synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis, and diarthrosis. With the first one being um, a, a movable joint, and the second one being slightly movable, and the last one being freely movable. Um, and this all belongs to the categorization of fun functionality. The other one is the categorization of structure. They are the fibers, which is immovable, Cartilage, uh, um, which is both immovable and slightly movable, and the synovial joints, which are freely movable. Mr. Esther, Dr. Chandra mentioned there are quite a few broken joints, including the sutures of the skull, right here. These are a type of fibrous joints whose irregular edges are tightly bound together by connective tissue. You have vertebral joints with a spinal column right here. Our cartilaginous joints. They're broken. You're broken. So are your arms. All your limbs. You're made up of synovial joints. They're separated by a joint cavity containing synovial fluid. The shapes of the articulating bone surfaces are what determine the movements allowed at the joints. There are six shapes that they are classified under, which are the plane, the hinge, the pivot, the condyloid, and the saddle of the bone and socket. The plane shaped joints, the articular surfaces are essentially flat, and the only movements allowed are non axial movements, which are slipping and gliding. Examples are intercapital joints of the legs. In the hinge shaped joints, the cylindrical end of one bone fits into a trough shaped surface on another bone. There are only uniaxial movements allowed, which occur around one axis and one plane. Examples are the elbow and the ankle joints. In the pivot shaped joints, the rounded end of one bone fits into a sleeve or ring of a bone or ligament. And they only allow uniaxial movements which occur around one axis and one plane. An example is the proximal radial nerve joint. In the condyloid shaped joints, the egg shaped articular surface of one bone fits into an oval concavity in another. There are only biaxial movements which allowed, which occur on two axes and move from side to side and back and forth. Examples, an example is the knuckle joints. In the saddle shaped joints, each articular surface has both convex and concave areas, like a saddle. It allows biaxial movements just like a condyloid shaped joint. An example is a carpometacarpal joint in the front. In the ball and socket shaped joints, the spherical head of one bone fits into a round socket in another, and they allow multi-axial movements, which occur in all axes. Examples are the shoulders and the hips. Hello, my son. <laughs> I know that you, uh, back on Earth, you suffered some serious bone repairs, and I'm here to tell you that it's a good thing that you know humans have advanced technology over the past few years, such as electrical stimulation. 
which is basically increases speed and completeness of healing. Enlarge or slowly healing fractions. Think of them like osteoblasts. And also you guys have the ultrasound, which is basically like also a speed repair of fresh fractures, reducing the healing time by 35 to 45%. It's also the free vascular fibular graft technique, which basically uses pieces of the fibula to replace missing bone. There's also self-extendable endoprosthesis, which is basically knee replacement, and vascular endothelial growth factor, which is protein stimulates growth of the blood vessels, bone substitutes, which includes pro-osteon, pro ceramic bone substitution, and norian SRS. But that can't beat the holiness of Jesus, and I'm here to heal you as Dr. Christ. So when you wake up, you're going to be healed, and also you're going to have the vast knowledge to spread to the physicians of today. Three, two, one. Wake up, my son. So how did you recover, my son? Uh, I'm doing a little better, but I don't remember anything before the accident. But I, I realized some of the doctors had some of the diseases that I learned last year. Really? In my anatomy class. I see. Yes. So uh, Dr. Chandra has osteoporosis, right? He has a, this walks like a hunchback, has a decrease in bone mass, susceptible to uh, fractures. Um, also, he has less estrogen, which means he's less uh, stimulant to, um, to osteoblast. Also, I realized Dr. Burnett. What? Had walks funny. He has rickets. I know that uh, his bones are weak for his body to support, which means he's not getting enough vitamin D, calcium, and phosphate. And also, I found out Dr. Montoya has rheumatoid arthritis, which is a chronic inflammatory disorder. Uh, it occur occurs three times as more women than men and it makes your hand look all funny with all the twisted joints and things. You can't move it and it affects your hand, your wrist, your um, knee, and especially your feet. Go on. Thank you for telling me all this, Mr. Esther. I guess out of all the prayers I answered, I felt to see their own problems as well. I guess because they were so devoted in trying to save you that their problems was like blinded from my own eyes. So I will try to heal them like I healed you. Thank you. Three, two, one. Ceramic bump. Oh, yeah, I think. <laughs>